1,786 pounds, the 67 911R is the lightest 911 ever made in Stuttgart. And Porsche achieved the low weight with the aid of fiberglass hood, doors, deck lid, bumpers, Lexan windows, and even a balsa wood shift knob. It weighed in at almost 500 pounds less than a 911S. Four prototypes and 20 customer cars were built in 1967, and the R paved the way for the TR, ST, and RS that followed. Powered by the 210 horsepower 2 liter flat six from the Carrera 906, the R was a screamer that revved to almost 10,000 RPM. Convinced or conceded or conveyed as a race car, the R never quite reached its full potential. The sales team at Porsche didn't think they could sell the 500 units needed to get the car homologated for GT racing. So the 911R had to compete with the big boys in the prototype class and outpaced by the likes of the Ford GT40. The R did win the 1967 Marathon de Route, an 84 hour race at the ring Later that year at Monza, it ran flat out for six days and set numerous distance, time, and speed records. And in 1969, it won the 911 Tour de France outright, and then sort of disappeared. Today, the R is considered a holy grail car by many Porsche enthusiasts, myself included, and it's been the source of inspiration for quite a few of my short wheelbase R-inspired sport purpose builds. driver a racer so, yeah, racing. Yeah, yeah so i mean that's what you know i appreciated about the car is like yeah you could probably take it and show it but it's a driver it's a good driver that's it. so on that note you mentioned the perfect word he built it you own it i'm gonna drive it let's go let's go all right <laughs> catch you later roads up in the crest, driving past the observatory. It's one of my all-time favorite cars. A lightweight, short wheel base, R-inspired, sport purpose for What I love about these cars is they're just nimble. You know, they're easy to maneuver around. Like I often say, they engage all the sensors, feel good sound and smell. But it's, it's the input, the communication between your brain, your two eyes, your hands and your feet on the wheel, putting the car exactly where you want it on the screen. Now this example, it shifts nice. It's got the 901 with the dog leg. It's a stock box, doesn't have gears. But it's just got enough. It doesn't have a short and cast of close ratio. It feels like a standard 901 box. Suspension's tight enough. You know, we're on some A1 tires with the uh, Fuchs 15 by 67s. Got a little bit of sidewall. Able to left foot brake and heel and toe pretty easy in the car. And it just comes alive on these twisty mountain roads. It's almost like this is the type of road that the car was built for. This car's not about all out horsepower. Currently, you know, this R inspired replica, we're running a 2.5 twin plug motor, which has got just the right amount of power to have fun. So, what made you buy this car? Well, oddly enough, you know, I've known BJ for years. Yeah. He shoots me a text, hey, I need to make a little room, I'm thinking of selling the R, let me know if you know anybody. So I thought, you know what, let me just go down and look for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> you look know, for a friend, I get it. <laughs> so, you know, I go down, do a little drive with them, and I didn't know much about 
cars other than the new R. And then I got in and realized, I'm like, wait, this is really familiar. This reminds me of my track prep modern 997.1. That car's full delete everything. Um, and so getting in this, I was like, oh my God, you know, 38, 40 years later, there's a lot of similarity. Different, but but similar. Super different, yeah. yeah. This works well on hill climbs and things like this. Yeah. But more importantly, it laid the, the framework, or it was the precursor to RS, RSR, and all For the lightweight. Sure. Yeah, without the R, there would have never been a TR that came in 68, an ST that came in 70, and then the iconic 73 RS and RSR. So yeah, this was Porsche's first foray, really, into racing. Obviously, the 911 had had some success in 65, 66, with the likes of Vic Helper. But this was Porsche's first sort of fully prepped attempt at a factory uh, race car that could get, you know, some big, big results. Yeah, I think, you know, you got a lot of Porsche fan or enthusiasts who don't really know. They just know they want to get weight out of their car. Yeah, they yeah. want to have a lightweight car. They don't know it started with this car. That's it. I mean, this car was 500 pounds lighter than a 67S. And when it had the Carrera 906 uh, two-liter motor in it, had 210 horsepower. The S that came out the same year had 160, and a regular 911 that this is based on had 130. So that, you know, in stock, in period correct trim, 210 horsepower versus 130, and 500 pounds lighter, and then it actually had six and seven inch boots on it. But the type Porsche only had five and a half inch wheels on a 67. So they were going lighter, wider, faster, and I think it was, what, about like 1,800-ish plus pounds? Yeah, it's like 787 kilos. So this, the 911R, this one, is Porsche's lightest 911 ever produced. Why the 911R? Let's talk about yes. this. This is a car that I've always loved. It's inspired a lot of my builds. Yep. Tell me what it is you love about it and why you built one. So... I was looking for a 911, had a good friend who was um, part of the Porsche club. He knew that I always dreamed about owning a Porsche and said, why, are you, why aren't you buying Porsche? I said, look, I'm spending right now 10 grand down, just always living within my means. Got it. Made a little more money. I said, okay, I'm gonna move towards Porsche. So I looked for kind of a early 911 and this short wheelbase happened to fit the build for me. But I was drawn to doing this R lightweight kind of tribute because at the age of 15, I had an Excellence magazine. Hold that thought, yeah. Excellence magazine, hold on. We yep, have, yep. I have the magazine, it's right here. Excellence magazine. Sit. You had this when? I had it when I was 15. So you've had it 30 odd years? Yep, in 1992. Wow, no way. Yeah. There it is. That's it. So. Had this magazine a bunch with a bunch of other Excellence magazines. Thought about this car. I used to show my dad this car. And the funny part of this story was, imagine building this car, opening a shop, and actually after seeing, re-looking at the magazine again, Carrie Morse yeah, wrote right, this yeah. story, yeah. became good friends. So it's kind of full circle. And um, this but, is what's great about the Porsche world is the full circle story. What do you love about driving this car? Feel the lightness. So I think trying to mock that story on like really lightweight, kind of small displacement stuff. I love early Abarth cars. I like stuff that has racy kind of bits and pieces to it, but you could feel the lightness in the car. And I feel like that go-kart kind of mobility and like with the, around. yeah, I think I love that. Also, I'm an aesthetics guy. I'm not gonna be here telling you the well, output. Is that's gone. not me. That's not me. I'm more, if I don't like the way it looks first, then I'm, I don't care to own it. Go. I want to, you know, in design and kind of that being my background, I, the chair I sit on, I have to love it. Uh, the home I live in has to match what I aesthetically see. And that's kind of, you know, I wanted to be an architect early. So I'm specific when it comes to aesthetics, um, but I definitely want, you know, function as well. So.
just has that raw, the raw feeling. I mean, there's nothing inside. It's loud, it's visceral. It feels like my race car, but you're in a street car. Got it, got it. So what you love about it is it's a streetable version of your race car. I think it's familiar, it's familiarity to me. You know, I was never a car collector. I, you know, all my money went to racing cars and not collecting them. I should have learned from you and, <laughs> and stopped racing a while ago and started well, buying cars. You, know, you got time on your side, you got time on your side yeah. there. Is, is this the first early car you've owned? No, so we, my wife's got a, a 62, uh, 356, okay, okay. Super 90. Got it. Um, but that, you know, that's a beach cruiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really hard to compare. So this is probably a first, you know, short wheelbase, 911. Um, but again, getting into it, it just, it had that familiarity of even, you know, back to my 997S, which is track prepped, delete everything, lightweight car, carpets out, everything. Does this seem even lighter than those cars to you? Does it seem more nimble, more responsive? How do you compare um, the two? You know, the race car right now, I'm in a GT4 class uh, Boxster S. I mean, that car feels like it's planted, it's on rails, it's a mid-engine car. This car, it feels a little bit more like a handful. It's a little twitchy. Moves around. Yeah, it moves around, it's light. Um, but, you know, it turns in, and but you feel everything. Got it. car. So you're connected with it on that sensory level. Yeah, feel and sound. Yeah, I mean, yeah. again, it's, it's it's loud in there. You know, you drive it there, yeah, no carpet, no nothing in the dash. So one of the great features about the 67R is fiberglass front fenders. Now, Porsche's saving weight. This car was 500 pounds lighter than a stock 67, and it had 210 horsepower from the Carrera 906 two-liter engine, compared to 160 on an S or 130 on a standard. But really, we're saving weight, we're 500 pounds lighter, and we've got a wider contact patch. The front fender is flared slightly to accommodate a 15 by 6 inch Fuchs on the front and a 15 by 7 inch Fuchs on the rear. You've got to remember, at the time in 1967, all other Porsches, if they were running a Fuchs, you know, they're either four and a half or five and a half inches wide. So we've got more contact patch with the 15.6 and 15.7 which means ultimately more rubber on the ground, which means more stick, more grip, and ultimately more speed. So that's one of the cool features of the R, it's slightly flared on the front, slightly flared on the rear. Fiberglass bumpers, fiberglass deck lid, fiberglass hood. That's how we're saving weight. We've got a Lexan window, Lexan rear quarter, Lexan front window with this little air pop vent, which it actually comes out of a aircraft plexi thing. It's a two inch wide, it swivels and you can get some cooling into the cabin. One of the other little cool minutiae about Porsche saving weight, getting rid of all that, you know, dead weight is fiberglass lightweight door handles instead of the chrome-plated pot metal steel ones. I don't really know how much weight this is saving, but it is saving so. So Brian, I know you come from a design background. Tell me a little bit about period correct. Yeah, you know, Period Correct started kind of many, many years ago. After I traveled out to Tokyo, I always had this kind of brand idea in the back of my pocket, and I kind of wanted something for the kind of passion that I was into. So for a community that I used to kind of like harbor, it was guys that love cars, architecture, furniture, horology, and I always used that term in my everyday life. So I said, Period Correct, yeah, me you. yeah, so I said, why not turn this more into a lifestyle? It's not really about, uh, for me, like the, you know, the tires or the wheels being from 1967. I want it more changing it into a lifestyle term. If you love vintage cars, you love new cars, racing, motorsports, you grew up around the same passion as I did. I wanted to kind of like paint that picture through apparel. If you talked about what you're into, what were you into growing up as a kid? You know, it's, it's funny because my earliest memory at four years old you know i just my entire bedroom the wallpaper was uh there was no cool wallpaper at the time but there was model t's i had die cast 118s on one side of the wall uh 1977 or 79 930 turbo above my headboard and i kind of grew up kind of really dreaming about a porsche because my dad drove us in a volkswagen to school every day and i was his dream car but yeah. I love the fact that you're grabbing it out. I do love that. Yeah. I love the steering wheel you chose. I love the rawness of it. Yep. I love the usability of it. It leads me to my final question. Yep. Why did you sell it to our buddy over there? 
while I had this, I was building a three liter 911T from 71. Okay. That car was supposed to be an ST. So I was thinking R, ST. Cool. I got topped out of the ST because they said, look, you may not feel like it, but your R is flared. So keep one car narrow. So I did that. And I thought long wheelbase, short wheelbase, perfect combo. Can like tell I can afford a 904 and a 906. I don't want another Porsche. Uh, I was in a period for in business where I had to make some moves right. to kind of like really take this to the next level. And um, this was the one you let go. This is the one. Yeah. Well, it's I, between good hands with that guy over there. I think that's right. Presentation rise, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, this is my brother, so it's like selling it to family. Sure. So I've known Jan for a very long time, and you know, he was gracious enough to like help me uh, in my current situation, and like. Couldn't be happier of where it landed. Yeah, yeah. Still and when I see it, I don't have any like remorse or any regret because I like he's enjoying it. And maybe someone else will enjoy it after him. How long have you owned it? Uh, I've had it a few months. Six, All right. six months. I and what, what's the furthest you've driven it? Road uh, trip. Took it up to Luft. Okay, so that's you know, 400 miles. Yeah, took it up to Luft, back, and then you know I get it out. You know, at least once a week, drive Exercise up it. through, you know, Malibu canyons and whatnot. I, I believe Porsche made four prototypes of this. One of them was gold. And then I believe you were telling me earlier of the 20 cars they produced, number 15 was gold also, right? Yeah, uh, yes. Sorry. So the, well, I, I don't know if he had it painted. I guess the owner, his wife, they were Cadillac people or something. Her car was a gold Cadillac. He painted it Cadillac gold. Is this Cadillac gold on a Porsche? Urban legend is Urban that legend. it's Cadillac gold. It's got a, a lot of metal flake in it, which really yeah. pops in this sun and looks pretty awesome. Yeah. So the base is a 67 normal, right? Yep. Yeah, which, you know, what the R was. Yeah, yeah. So built on yeah. the same original chassis. Building a car has to be something you love. You have to like looking at it. You have to enjoy driving it. You know, don't, you know, I'm not out there trying to see what the next man's building. So this car was very personal to me because it was one of the first builds I had that took me from like, you know, start to finish. So today I learned that's kind of not what I want to do today. I want cars that might need wheels, yeah, yeah. some paint, if that. Yeah, I got it. But I just want to drive. Well, this was a good experience. This was a great experience. And I learned a lot from this car. Um, some good, some bad. Yeah. So what I like to do is take inspiration from the original, but then tweak it and throw in my own flavor. And a perfect example of how the R has inspired my builds are the R turn signals here. These didn't appear on a production car. This would have been a plexi amber lens. This was a lightweight cover. It didn't have the steel bucket behind it. Even on the Porsche original, these don't fit good. This is a fiberglass piece that they just shoved on. When Porsche was building their 20 customer cars, I don't think they cared about the fit and finish of them too much. So if you see here, it kind of comes out on this bit and then it ticks in in this bit. I always thought that looked a little messy. But when I was building my car, I grafted these into the body. So it became seamless like this integrated R inspired rear turn signal and brake light. So that was an example of how I took inspiration from the R, but tweaked my own version of it. Like my R inspired cars had a louvered deck lid as opposed to a regular deck lid in fiberglass. So I'm taking inspiration from the original, but I'm adding my own flavor and character in it. Yep. What else you want to tell me about it? Um, you know, I think, you know, you know, again, it's, you know, fiberglass hood, fiberglass uh, rear deck lid. You got the center fill, um, you know, it's a three gauge dash. Um, you know, we kind of talked about, I mean, there's just no carpet. So yeah, it's stripped out. Lexan uh, rear side. Um, I don't know, what else? Can it I tell it you? gets the blood pumping. I think that's all, all we really need to know. So on that note, we probably just need to go for another drive. Yeah, let's do it. All right, man. Here you go. You can ride shotgun. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get in and ride. Right. Uh, Thank you, sir. Ride the rail. <laughs> because it's mostly second, third gear. But it's twisty, it undulates, it gets your blood pumping. You now this is the type of workout I like. I don't go to the gym. This is my workout right here. Going through the gears, wheeling and towing, rev matching. The 
avoiding the rocks. Trail break in, back to gas. Just really right through second and third gear, bit of left on the brake. Back down a second. Bit more of a road here, carry a little more speed, make that a second, late apex in, throttle out, throttle out. So, the 911R that BJ built and my buddy Jans now owns. For me, the driving experience was pretty pure. I've driven a lot of these early cars before, and I would say theirs is like an interpretation of an R. What I build is more of a sort of sport purpose, not quite as authentic. You know, from the visual point of view, they really nailed the look of the R. The driving point of view, it was like just pure early short wheel base. Intoxicating, it moved around, you know, it's a bit of a handful, it's, it's rowdy, it's raucous, it engages all the sensors. You know, it's something you've got to be on your tiptoes, always looking ahead. So, you know, it was an engaging, rewarding drive. One of those things that I would say was like a memorable moment.